Good morning. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start week 18. We're going to be, we're not so much talking about parts of speech anymore as now we're going to kind of go into sentences and um, parts of sentences. So this week we're going to be talking about clauses and phrases. Now, <clears throat> we're also going to be learning to diagram those. Now, I have, in my past, I have been accustomed to clauses and phrases. I've been taught those uh, kinds of things, uh, learn those things, know those things. I do not, however, know some of these things because I've been looking through this week and there's a few things in here that I'm not aware of. I was unfortunate enough to have to go to public school. Therefore, I learned nouns, verbs, and adjectives. And so that's pretty much all I know. Never diagrammed when I was in school that I can remember. So um, anyway, but I hope you saw the note that I had on Google Classroom that I purchased this diagramming dictionary. I had a coupon, so I was able to get a good discount on it. And I downloaded this, and it's from the same company that we are doing our uh, grammar. Um, anyway, I, I, I downloaded it. I don't have the hard copy. I just simply have it on here. But it's... Um, a book that should help us in our diagramming and you can look at this book any I don't care if you're taking a test a quiz a review does not matter you can refer to this book anytime you want to but it's only going to help us with diagramming and so these are you know this, the parts of diagramming how we've learned them so we are actually down here on part uh, six phrases and clauses so this to me was the hardest the predicate adjectives and nominatives and those types of things that we've been learning. Uh, but anyway, so this kind of will help us uh, in our diagramming. So I'm going to kind of keep that pulled up pretty much every time we do grammar. So let us go ahead and look at week 18. Now lesson 69 for today's lesson is really not so bad. It's, it's pretty simple. So let's go ahead and look at our page. We've got um, going over just some simple things. A phrase now the main thing is make sure you keep phrase and clauses separate that's what we're working with today a phrase is a group of words that serves a single grammatical function a verb phrase is the main verb plus any helping verbs for instance this sentence four musketeers were waiting their return their turn okay your verb is were waiting this together is called a verb phrase we're waiting it's the whole verb okay it's a phrase because it serves a single grammatical function in this sentence the phrase we're waiting serves as the verb phrase okay a prepositional phrase begins with a preposition ends with a noun or pronoun okay so of the most animated group okay that is a prepositional phrase it's a phrase that serves as one grammatical function in this sentence of the most animated group serves as a prepositional phrase. Okay, of great hot is another one. A prepositional phrase that describes a noun or pronoun is called an adjective phrase. So for instance, he wore a long cloak of crimson velvet. Of crimson, I'm sorry, my computer froze. Of crimson velvet is a prepositional phrase because it starts with the preposition of and it ends with the noun velvet, of crimson velvet. Now, in this sentence, this prepositional phrase is describing or modifying the cloak. So that means that this is telling which cloak, which one, the one of crimson velvet. So this one's working as an adjective phrase. A prepositional phrase that describes a verb adjective or adverb is called an adverb phrase. So the young man advanced into the tumult and disorder. Okay, Into the tumult and disorder right here. This is the whole prepositional phrase because this is the preposition and this is the OP. There's actually two of them. There's a compound. So into the tumult and disorder is the prepositional phrase. 
Now, this is an adverbial phrase or an adverb phrase because it's actually describing or modifying advanced, the verb advanced. So an adverb phrase or an adverbial phrase uh, describes a verb, adjective, or adverb, okay? The adjective phrase only describes a noun or pronoun. So we have to keep those separate. Okay, now a clause is a group of words that has a subject and a predicate. Notice that these phrases do not have subjects and predicates. They only work to serve a purpose, basically to describe something, okay? Now a clause is not, you can't really say that every clause is a sentence, but it has a subject and a predicate. These here are clauses behind the dusty wardrobe, okay? Do you see how it has a subject and a predicate? Um, actually, this whole thing right here is actually a prepositional phrase. Um, Lucy opened the door, leaping and bounding. They did not believe her. He tasted the delicious candy because he wanted more. Okay, this here, he is your subject wanted your verb. Here, he tasted. They did believe. Remember, not is not part of the verb. They did believe. Now, leaping and bounding, this one and this one, I think, um, these don't have subjects, so I don't know that these are clauses. An independent clause can stand by itself as a sentence. So, an independent clause is just simply a fancy term or a sentence. Okay, now uh, he tasted the delicious candy. This is an independent clause because it can stand alone. It has a subject and a verb and it can stand alone as a sentence. Okay, so a sentence is a group of words that usually contains a subject and a predicate, begins with a capital letter, ends with a punctuation mark. A sentence contains a complete thought, as in, can we measure intelligence without understanding it? Possibly so. Now these are all sentences. Physicists measured gravity and magnetism long before they understood them theoretically. Maybe psychologists can do the same thing with intelligence. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, I don't know why they put that in there, but they do. All right, so let's get our pencils ready, or pen. So a dependent clause is a fragment that cannot stand by itself as a sentence. So we have an independent and we have a dependent. Now, I'm, I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say that you know what independent and dependent means. So let's make sure we do. Independent means you can do it yourself. If you are independent, you can do it by yourself. When we turn three, four, five years old, we are independently potty trained. We can go to the bathroom by ourselves. okay? When we are a baby, we are dependent upon our mom or dad to take us to the bathroom. We're dependent on someone. So a dependent sentence, it can't stand by itself. It's dependent upon something. An independent clause can stand by itself. Okay, so just think of that word. Now, although Jamie didn't mean to eat the entire cake, so would this be dependent or independent? This would be dependent because it cannot stand by itself as a sentence. Okay, whether they won or lost, same thing, it's dependent. He picked up the pieces. This is independent. This can stand by itself. That milk is from Uncle Louie's cow. Independent. Since she was already covered in mud, that's dependent. We need something else here. Because my grandmother came to visit, that's dependent. I cleaned up my room, independent. Now what if we put those together? Because my grandmother came to visit, I cleaned up my room. Here we have a dependent clause with an independent clause that make a sentence. So dependent clauses begin with what we call subordinating words. Actually, when I was a kid, they called them subordinating conjunctions, but nonetheless. So subordinating words are what starts a dependent clause. So you see words like although, because, since, even the words then, 
after those are words that are subordinating words. Dependent clauses are also known as subordinate clauses. Okay, that's just going to be something you'll have to remember. Highlight it, mark it down, write it on your paper, whatever. Alright, so let's go ahead and distinguish between phrases and clauses. Now, we're going to identify the following groups of words as phrases or clauses. Okay, so we'll put, you can just put P or C. If it's a phrase, put a P. If it's a clause, put a C. So the clauses may be independent or dependent, but you only need to identify them as clauses. In each clause, underline the subject once in the verb twice. Are we ready? Okay. What are you doing? Get my notes ready so I can write on this. I hope my computer doesn't freeze. I'm going to change it to red. It's a little easier to see. All right, so um, here we go. So twisting and winding. Now let's remember that a, a clause has a subject and a predicate. It may or may not be a complete sentence, but it has a subject and predicate. A phrase does not. It just simply works as what has only one function. So twisting and winding only has one function. Those are probably like compound verbs, compound predicates. So then this would be a phrase. So you're going to put a P here. Okay, and there's nothing to underline because it says just to underline the subject and the verb uh, if it's a clause. Okay, so the rooster fought the hen. Okay, that is a clause and therefore it has a subject and a verb. So the verb is fought and rooster is the subject. Okay. All right, because of the earthquake, that is a phrase, no subject, no verb. Remember, we were talking about just right up here that dependent clauses um, have those, sub they start with subordinating words. Well, because is one of those, okay? So anytime you, I remember when I was a kid, my teachers would say, never write a, never start a sentence with the word because. And then when we got older in school, we could write words with because. Well, the reason for that is because when you're small, you might write something like because of the earthquake, period. But when you're older, you'll know to write because of the earthquake, comma, blah, 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 blah. All right, like this, because the earthquake toppled a major building. Okay, this is definitely a clause and the verb is toppled and who or what toppled earthquake. Okay, Macy was shocked. That's a clause. It's actually an independent clause too because it can stand by itself. So your verb phrase is was shocked and your subject is Macy. Okay, dribbling the basketball. Phrase. Although eels and jellyfish are not, okay, that's actually a clause. Here's why. This is a verb. Remember not is not a verb, but are is, and eels and jellyfish are the subject. So it's a clause, it's just a dependent clause. It wasn't Brady's fault. Clause. So your verb is was. Don't underline the nt part because you know what that is. That word is not. And remember not is not a verb. So you would only underline was and your subject is it through the bathrooms of the big bungalow. That's actually a phrase because this is a preposition. So this is through the bathrooms of the big bungalow. That's two prepositional phrases. Remember a phrase works as one, it only has one function. He was a mongoose. Laws. Was is your verb. He is your subject. 
tickling under my chin. Phrase, no subject and verb. Okay, all right, on this part, we're gonna distinguish between independent and dependent clauses. IND for independent, DEP for dependent. Okay, so unless he could clean his room in the next hour. Okay, now this is going to be dependent and the reason I'm putting D or I because it's too hard for me um, with this mouse. Okay, because this word is a subordinating conjunction or a subordinating word. It's one of those things that it leaves you hanging. You just want to go, unless he could clean his room the next hour. <gasps> What happened? <laughs> it's a hang, it's a cliffhanger, you might say. He laid the bricks one by one. Independent. As she munched chips on the train. Dependent. Since the new baby was born. Dependent. Are you noticing these words that it, they start with? Okay. The balloon sailed high into the clouds. Independent. If he hadn't heard the kitten mewing. Dependent. It would have been awful. Independent. Rikitiki Tavi tingled all over. Independent. When morning came. Dependent. Though Ricky Ticky Tabby had never met a live cobra before, dependent. Okay, you notice on all these dependent clauses, notice what they start with, those words. Okay, just notice on all of those, they all start with words that leave you on a cliffhanger, basically. All right, now you're going to be so happy. We don't have to diagram sentences today, but we will tomorrow. Now, exercise 69C says to take three of these dependent clauses right up here and make them into complete sentences, okay? The dependent clause can go before or after the, depend the independent clause. So basically, you're gonna take, let's see, I'll take this one. Y'all don't use this one. I'm just gonna use this one as an example, but y'all want y'all to use choose another one. So I would say, um, she made a mess as she munched chips on the train. Or you could say, as she munched chips on the train, she made a mess. It doesn't matter which way you have it. Independent first, dependent first, it doesn't matter as long as it makes a complete sentence, okay? So I'd like for you to go ahead and do that. Um, if you don't mind, after you write your three sentences, you can do on the back of your paper. I don't care where you put it. Circle those like in a red crayon or marker or something so that whenever I check your papers, I can look at those and, and just make sure that you did those correctly. Okay, that'll be all for today.